In this video, using Apple Motion, we're gonna build this simple title animation. Also, don't forget, as a patron, you can download this project file and use it inside of Final Cut Pro right now. For this particular project, we're gonna wanna work with the Final Cut title, that way we can push it over into Final Cut Pro. You can set your preset frame rate and duration to whatever you typically like to work with and then push open. When you first open up a title inside of Apple Motion, you'll have both a type text here layer and a title background. Go ahead and delete both of those. From there, we're gonna select our title tool because of course we need a title and we can just write in whatever we like. After that, I'll go over to the left side under inspector and we can change the settings according to our taste. I like to center it up, makes things a little bit easier and really scale the size up quite a bit. Once we've done that, let's go on over into the properties, locate our position, and we can click on this down arrow and select reset parameter. With our subscribe text in place, we might wanna just click and drag it down a little bit, that way it's more centered inside of our project and that's looking pretty good. We have our simple title, it's time to go ahead and create all the duplicated text popping out of it. To do so, we're gonna select the main group that contains the title. This is a very important step, which I'll get into in just a little bit. So making sure you select that primary group, we'll go to the top right and select replicate. From there, you'll see that we've created this amorphous blob of subscribe text, so we'll go to to the left side and find the rectangle option here under shape and change it over to line. So now that will give us two control points that we can drag however we want. By default, Apple Motion hides the visibility of the original layer you replicated. So let's go ahead and enable that so we can see the original here in the center. From there, we'll go over to the start and end point offsets. Let's set the X value on both of these to zero so that our object is completely centered. From there, we'll find the Y value which we can go ahead and set to a positive of 960 or a negative of 960. That's gonna give us enough space up top and down bottom for all of our titles to fit in this screen. If you're working on a 1080 timeline, you're gonna to need to play around with these values to get them looking the way you want. Earlier, we created this replicator based off of this original group. And the reason we selected this group rather than selecting the title inside is because now we are replicating off of the group instead of the title, which means that if we move this title, that replicator is going to carry around the position data. So that means we can drag this anywhere around the screen that we want. If I select just the group, you'll notice that I can move the title around solo. This is just an added benefit and added adds more flexibility down the road. With our replicator set up in place, we can go ahead and select it and find our points. Right now we have these large gaps in between all of the titles, so let's shrink those up by adding more points. I'll just go ahead and drag this up, and I find that by setting them to an odd value, we have a center title that lines up specifically with our original title. So you can set this to whatever you like. I happen to like how nine looks for this particular project. And then from there, it's time to create the outline effect. To do so, we'll go ahead and select all of our replicators, then we'll go up to filters, go down to border, and select stroke. Now we still have a filled in version of all of our titles and we want them to only be outlines. Fortunately, stroke comes with a super easy setting and that is to hide the source. So I'll go ahead and check this box and now we only have our outlines as well as our regular text down here. Now I want these subscribe text layers to actually be behind the original layer. So let's select the group that contains the replicator and I'm gonna push command left bracket and that will drop it in the layer stack. So things are starting to look really good, but we wanna adjust the coloring of this because this red is just a little bit too strong for my liking. So let's select the stroke that we've applied and under the color settings, we could set this to a solid value if we wanted to. So we could make it a crazy neon light blue or we could also do a gradient setting. So if you wanted it to change colors over the entire project, you could do just that. And we could even go in and play around with the presets that they have. Maybe we'll try Dawn Purple. That's looking kind of cool. We could expand out this gradient and adjust these colors according to taste. Plus, if you come over here and make sure we have the Adjust Item tool selected, we can expand this out and adjust this gradient however we like. So that's looking super cool to me. It's time to go ahead and animate this replicator. To do so, let's select the replicator and we'll go over to the Start and End Point. I'm gonna make sure my playhead is about one second into the timeline and I'm going to click to add 
a keyframe. Let's move our playhead back to the very beginning of the timeline and set both of these values to zero. If I push play though, you can see that the animation is really amateur looking. It doesn't look very smooth and it just feels really clunky. So we're gonna wanna take this to the next level using the keyframe editor. But before I show you the keyframe editor, my Apple Motion Masterclass is on the last day of its Black Friday sale. If you're enjoying this style of video and wanna learn even more about Apple Motion, definitely go check out my Apple Motion Masterclass. I don't wanna take up any more of your time, so let's get back into the video. So to make this feel dynamic and fluid, let's go on over into the keyframe editor, which we can get there by clicking these three diamonds, or you can push Command-8. Now, because we have this replicator selected, we should be seeing our keyframes down here in the keyframe editor. If you're not, make sure that you go to the top left corner of the keyframe editor and select animated, and that will show you all of the keyframes that have been animated with the selected object. Taking a look at our animation, it's a very linear animation. Let's go ahead and add some smooth curves to this. I'm gonna select the last couple keyframes here by creating a box selection. Then I will grab one of the points that it has created and hold shift and then just drag this over to the left hand side. So now we have a really nice curved animation. Let's go ahead and push play and see how much smoother that looks. Now, I don't wanna go through the hassle of re-adding these exact same keyframes to the end, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a really handy trick which is reversing these keyframes. To do so, let's go to the very center frame which will be five seconds on a 10 second timeline, and I'm actually gonna select 459. Then we can go over to the left side and add keyframes to both of these points. Now that we've done that, we've essentially created an animation that lasts for five seconds. At the end of that animation, we want it to reverse, so let's go back over to these keyframes. We'll click on this down arrow and then select after last keyframe, we want it to ping pong. So if we take a look at our keyframes over here on the right hand side, we can see that they're going in the reverse direction of their original keyframe points. So they pop in just like so and going to the end, they slide out. What's really amazing about the way that we've set this up, we can jump into our title and type in whatever we want. So let's just type in Apple Motion Masterclass. And maybe it's a little bit too large, so I'll shrink it up. And just like that, we've gone ahead and updated all of this to work with an entirely new text. Don't forget, if you're a patron, you can download this project file and use it over in Final Cut Pro for your own videos right now. You can also pick it up on my Patreon store if you don't feel like subscribing. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.